What happens when an accountant builds a car and not the engineer? Let's take a look. So this is a really nice 2011 Mercedes E350 convertible. And really there's not a whole lot wrong with the car, but it's here because when the driver attempts to operate the convertible top, it literally sprays them in the face with hydraulic fluid. We're going to take a look at the actual leak and everything that had to come apart and why it's so expensive to fix something that's just one small hose and how it all could have been avoided with better engineering. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. So this is where it happens in the driver's seat. You go to operate the convertible top and right from this frame piece right here, it literally sprays you in the face. It, spray, it gets all over the interior and makes a huge mess. Let me show you guys exactly where it's at. So as you can see along the frame of the convertible top, there are two hydraulic hoses that are just ran along the inside of the frame. And although it's not a problem in the current position, after you open and close this multiple times, it actually just keeps bending the, the steel braided hose until it snaps. And that's where it sprays you all over the face. I talked to Magic Mike who's doing this job and he said this is a common issue. These fail all the time and they just make a huge mess all over the place. What is it with Mercedes Benz and spraying people in the face with hydraulic fluid? Why do they do that so much? This goes all the way back to the late 80s, early 90s when they came out with the SL500 and it had the hydraulic convertible top that would fold down. Those cylinders fail and it sprays you in the lap, sprays you all over your chest. Luckily this is not a cylinder problem, but this is crazy. Here we are in 2011 and we still haven't solved or found a way to operate a convertible top without spraying people all over themselves. Now, this problem is not a cylinder. The cylinders are fine. They're all dry. They operate just fine. This time around, however, it's the actual steel high pressure line that's the problem. And the line itself, although it may be a little bit expensive, in order to get it out is a major teardown. Let me show you guys what I mean. So as you can see, we have moving blankets all over the interior to help block from any further leakages. If you operate or try to move this at all, it starts leaking more fluid out and we don't want any more fluid than already has leaked into the interior. But we have the inside track of this all apart. And then I'll open this door and we'll look straight up this way and I'll show you more that's apart. You can see we have the panel off that goes to the cylinders inside the header panel or brace or whatever you want to call it. As you can see, there's no leaks inside of there. The cylinders and everything are fine. It's the hose that goes to those cylinders that's leaking. We have to open all that up so we can disconnect the hose and then fish it through the framework where we just showed you where it's currently leaking. But that's not all. Let's move to the back. As you can see, we had to remove all these panels, panels and panels and panels. Set that down. Basically tore the trunk apart to get to the hose that goes back there in the corner. You can see the hydraulic unit. It's a little white reservoir. It says maximum and minimum on it. Right there is the hydraulic pump, the reservoir, and the valve block that controls the whole system. That hose runs from the header panel of the convertible top all the way back to this pump. There are no break points or anywhere you can quickly disconnect this hose you have to string it through all of this. So as you can see, all those hoses meet at one small junction plate and you have to remove that plate to undo the hose. It's quite a big process and it's going to be messy. It's not going to be very fun at all. And you have to do all of that in this small space right here. This is going to be a very tedious job for one hose. It's a major teardown. After we saw where the leak was, Magic Mike looked at me and he was like, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to be good. This is not a 10 minute job. 
And I looked at him and I said, that tells me it's not going to be a $200 job either. This is going to be very, very expensive. It's going to easily exceed $1,000, if not maybe even double that. Because we're going to have hours of labor to get to this thing. Then we have to clean all the interior out, string the new hose in, put all this stuff back together, all for one tiny little pinhole of a leak. It's easy to think that we could just mend right there where the pinhole is, but the hose is like braided spiral steel. You're just not going to be able to interface with those very easily. And the little connections that Mercedes uses for these, you can't just go to the hardware store and buy that stuff. We're going to have to remove the hose as an entire length and then replace the entire length of that hose. Oh, and by the way, we had to also remove this as well. It's kind of like a, a rollout deal. This had to come out of the trunk. There's a lot more parts in this as well. I was over here watching Magic Mike work, and he was just pulling out piece after piece after piece, and I was like, oh my goodness. This could have been saved with just some proper engineering. Let's move to a little skit that me and Mrs. Wizard are going to do to help you understand how this happens. Okay, I was going through the engineering documents. I was looking at the routing for all the hydraulic hoses in this car, and I think there's a problem right at the hinge point where the convertible top opens. Us in engineering are concerned that over constant use that could break and literally spray the person in the face. That could be a hazard. I wanted to take a, take a look at it. So this part you're looking at, you're wanting to replace this with an, a different fitting that's going to cost $5.85 more each time we build a car. Yeah, it's a little swivel right there at the hinge point. It's like a valve block. It would allow it to move fluidly without breaking the hose. Do you understand that $5.83 times the 200,000 vehicles we'll be producing, that adds up very quickly? Well, yes, but that, isn't that the hallmark of Mercedes is proper good engineering? Except my job as the accountant is to make sure that we don't go over budget. Let me show you. Okay. That comes out to be $1.16 million. $1.1 million. Yes. I still think it's a worthwhile investment that these cars could last longer. Nobody wants to be sprayed in the face. Who, who cares? This, when will this fail? How long will this work? It'll last probably three to five years. Well, then we... that's not our problem. It's out of warranty and that becomes the customer's problem. I don't, I reject this offer. Keep it as it is. Okay, you're the boss. So in that little skit we just did, I played the act of the engineer and Mrs. Wizard was the accountant. This happens so much in the automotive industry. It's not just Mercedes Benz. It can be Ford, Chevy, Hyundai, Bentley, it could be any company. Actually, it's all of them. Engineers come up with an idea. This is the way it would work. This will make it last. And the accountants cut them down and say, no, shut up. This isn't going to happen. It costs too much. At the end of the road, we want more money in our pocket, which means I get a bigger Christmas bonus as the accountant. I don't care about you making it last longer. It's going to last long enough to get past the warranty. That's all it needs to do. That's so unfortunate with cars in America, but you all know that they don't want you to keep your car for 30 years. They want you to buy a new car every three years. So that's basically what we're seeing going on here. So we're all experts in our own individual fields that we work in, and we see this stuff all the time, things that could be improved, but we're really powerless to do anything about it. This issue right here is going to happen to more E350 convertibles. What is there I can do about it? Nothing. All I can do is when they come in, we can replace the hose and it'll last another three, five, eight years, however long it'll last. Sometimes there are upgraded parts or upgraded things that can be done. There really isn't anything in this case. We just replace the hose. But it's just so sad to see a car this far torn down and it's going to be this expensive of a bill when all they had to do at the factory was make a different style of a hose or maybe add a pivot point or something that would make that hose not do that. We wouldn't be standing here today even discussing this. The customer would be operating their convertible top with no trouble at all. One option that 
can be done with this car is that you get the convertible top into its closed position and you just never use it again. Don't touch that button because you're going to get sprayed. You just don't use it again. But if that's the case, then why do you have a convertible top? You should have got a hard top normal sedan or coupe, whatever the, the car happens to be. But just keep that in mind. If you do run into this issue, it won't hurt anything to just put the convertible into its fully closed position and just leave it alone. There's actually a lot of R129 owners that I've come across over the years where they say my hydraulic cylinders are leaking. And we all know that there are, depending on the year, there's 10 or 11 hydraulic cylinders in the entire system. When one starts to leak, or two or three, we replace all of them because it's a domino effect. You fix the two leaking ones, now the pressure moves to the next weakest one, and three months later you get sprayed again, and then you get angry at your mechanic. Why didn't we replace all these when we had it apart? And it's because you didn't want to spend the money. We do not replace them with new ones, they're rebuilt ones. I use Mercedes Hydraulic Cylinder Repair up by Kansas City area in that part of Kansas. I've been using that company for a long time. I've never had a comeback. They do very, very good work. I've done 11 or 12 sets of R129 cylinders, and it's usually over $3,000 to do all of it. Three to four grand. And I've actually had a few customers say, nah, bro, I ain't paying that for this car. That's half the value of the whole car. And I said, well, the other option, just like I just mentioned, is to lock it down into its closed position and you never open it again. And they're like, hey, that's cool. That's what I'll do then. That is an option, but it kind of defeats the purpose of having a convertible top. But I understand it's very expensive to fix. Now, we're just doing one hose on this, but it's still going to be very expensive. One thing we can proposition to the customer is we replace all the hoses that are in the convertible top where those hinge points are. Very likely they won't do it. They just want to replace the one that's leaking. So that's all I can do. I can't force people to do things. A lot of people in the comments say, well, I would have done this or I would have done that, but it's really not my choice. So this is just a short little video to show you guys how a very small problem can turn to be very expensive. You guys just saw a video on a silver Mercedes where the bill didn't have to be so high, but this one did have to be so high and it's unfortunate. So if you're curious what kind of tools Magic Mike is using to fix this E350, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more cars coming into the shop constantly. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.